Facebook group. So last uh, week we describe the Stone von Neumann theorem and we uh, classify uh, essentially all uh, unitary irreducible representations of the Heisenberg group in the um, uh, Hilbert spaces. Um, so such representation became unitary equivalent uh, depending from our taste we may say it is uh, to the Schrodinger representation on the real line or we may say what that will be equivalent to the representation on the complex plane for the fox siegel bargman spaces and second representation probably is um, preferable for many reasons. Now we are moving further um, investigation to do further investigation related to infinitesimal uh, representations associated to uh, Heisenberg group. So as usually it happened in mathematics there is an advantage to expand as uh, field of our constants um, from real to complex numbers and um, that happened for example if we are considering the Lie algebras and so we consider previously Lie algebras uh, was introduced as the real vector space now we um, for this vector space uh, introduce additionally complex constant and in, uh, in uh, particular the important role is placed uh, by following operators a plus or minus where we are taking uh, generators of subgroup x and y and uh, make uh, them a linear combination with imaginary unit i then it's easy to verify uh, from the Heisenberg commutator relation, if we know what commutator of x and y is equal to s, then the commutator of a plus and a minus will be i over 2s. So that will be a calculation which based on the Heisenberg uh, commutator relation. And if we will move to a um, irreducible representation, if we will consider representation, say, in the Schrodinger space, then um, that commutator due to image of S will go to a multiple of identity so without imaginary unit a commutator of X and Y will be identity times imaginary unit here that imaginary unit disappear <coughs> for um, uh, we already uh, familiar with that operator uh, already a minus when we are considered uh, when we have considered the uncertainty relation we told what um, minimal state um, for the uh, uh, mini uh, state minimizing uncertainty uh, both for x and y simultaneously shall satisfy to certain relation uh, related to x and y <clears throat> and so uh, that relation is essentially operator a minus and so we know the solution of this function uh, that uh, function will be the Gaussian phi uh, so uh, we put here the null solution for this function we put solution for um, this function here and uh, consider further function which are generated by the application of powers of a plus to uh, uh, the Gaussian then uh, it's easy to observe the following properties of operators we have just introduced uh, first of all a plus and a minus are uh, conjugated operators so we have here uh, the uh, following uh, adjoint properties uh, for these two operators on the Hilbert space over real line. Furthermore, uh, we may see from the commutator relation between a plus and a minus what any function u is I, uh, transformed by a minus to the previous function function with the uh, lower index. Uh, so u sub m is transformed to a multiple of u sub m minus 1 and that follow from the commutator relation as it's easy to see that may be by induction generalized to any 
M. Uh, furthermore, uh, we may, because uh, the Gaussian is annihilated by A minus, we may uh, observe what function UN and UM are orthogonal if N different from N. That is easy to verify because we put here the inner product. And then uh, using the adjointness of our operator, we may put the higher power to the opposite sign, and when it uh, higher power, I mean, is uh, assume here m is bigger than n, so we put it to the left uh, hand side of the inner product, and when uh, due to commutator relation, so uh, that uh, left hand side will be annihilated by that operator a minus. The common name, by the way, for this operator is operator of annihilation and creation, which came from the quantum mechanics, and we will um, explore it a little bit uh, later in connection with the uh, harmonic uh, oscillator. So, our functions are orthogonal, and it's not difficult to calculate, again, from the same relation and annihilation property for the Gaussian, what the norm of this square of the norm of this operator is um, pi to the power m, m factorial. So, uh, having a collection of orthogonal functions, it's natural to normalize them and consider orthonormal basis. Orthonormal basis obtained from function OM is known as Hermit function. So, um, uh, that is common definition of the Hermit function, where you take phi to be the Gaussian, when you apply m powers of that creational operator to Gaussian and normalize it by the square root of p to the power m m factorial. That will be orthonormal system, orthonormal uh, basis, a very convenient orthonormal basis on the uh, L2 space. <clears throat> Furthermore, for that, uh, because uh, new function, Hermit function, are just uh, uh, constant factors of previous function OM, we easily can deduce a relation action of our operator A minus and A plus, on this new Hermitian function. So this is what we can do uh, very straightforwardly uh, from the previous relation. So picture became even simpler if we will consider uh, that operators, images of operators A plus and A minus in Fock Siegel Bergman space. So uh, again, direct calculation. Uh, from the derived form of representation for operators tell us what images of A plus and A minus are given by identity 74. And then we may simply <coughs> note that uh, image of the Gaussian, uh, which we denoted under the uh, fox eagle bergman transform, which we denoted by the capital Phi, uh, shall be uh, simultaneously the null solution of two operators. First of all, this is uh, the derived representation, so derived of the left regular action uh, for the, uh, which annihilate Gaussian. This is uh, derived representation for A minus. And second, that is a derived form of the right action, which is necessary for the <coughs> Uh, annihilation property of our image uh, under uh, the analyticity property in Fox Eagle Bachman space. These two equations actually uh, tell us uh, that image of the Gaussian shall be in new coordinates a function which is exponent of minus pi zz bar uh, that is uh, uniquely defined up to a constant, a constant factor. Uh, we know the image of the Gaussian under fox eagle bergman transfer uh, tra um, map even without uh, calculation, so out of um, corresponding uh, differential equation we define that map. Again, we may uh, see what happens <coughs> if we will uh, denote uh, corresponding uh, operator phi capital M, sub M uh, be images of uh, function phi, uh, 
uh, under action of creation annihilation to the power m and corresponding uh, normalization factor, factor pi to the power m, m factorial uh, to the power, uh, square root of that expression. When <coughs> it's easy to verify uh, from the explicit form of our operators, what we have here the uh, essentially monomials, monomials normalized by the monomials of variable z bar normalized by the Gaussian like term. As I explained on the previous lecture, uh, there is here a possibility how we uh, treat that normalization factor, either we attach it to our function or we consider it as a part of corresponding um, Gaussian measure on the complex plane. So here I mostly <coughs> follow the uh, convention that uh, that factor is attached to functions rather than to the measure. Uh, when the corresponding action of operators a plus and a minus on our function phi capital is explain why with operator a plus and a minus are called ladder operators. So really on the chain of function phi zero, phi one, phi two, so on, uh, operators a plus act by the shift to the right and operator a minus act by a shift to the left. So it's like making one step on the ladder uh, with indices of this operator. This is the uh, action uh, of this operator. Then another name uh, which came from quantum mechanics, creation and annihilation, explained as follow. The corresponding uh, function, eigenfunction um, uh, of harmonic oscillator of phi naught, phi one, phi two, phi three, corresponding to discrete values of the spectrum. Uh, represent a certain uh, physical system where we have corresponding number of particles in the system uh, and when a creation annihilator increase number of particles by one and annihilation operator decrease number of particles in the system by one. So this is the action of our operators in that uh, setup. So let's consider with a bit uh, more details. So we introduce the Hamiltonian of the uh, harmonic oscillator. Uh, this is operator H based on the <coughs> A plus and A minus. So it's a symmetrized product of A plus and A minus really. And uh, if you will come back to the ladder action you will see what a minus decrease power of uh, index of our function when uh, subsequent um, application of a plus return value of an index to initial state and similarly the opposite product a plus a minus first increase the value of index and then decrease it so in the sum we have <coughs> corresponding uh, property that uh, all function phi sub m are eigenfunction for the Hamiltonian operator of harmonic oscillator with corresponding odd integers as eigenvalues, odd integers times pi. <coughs> so spectrum of the harmonic oscillator is discrete and uh, uh, eigenfunction orthogonal complete ortho ortho uh, orthonormal system is provided by Hermit function in the Schrodinger model or by powers of variable z bar times the Gaussian uh, in the Fox Siegel Bartman space. <coughs> and um, we may also deduce the action of the ladder operator on the uh, uh, eigenfunction from the commutator relation. This is a quite common um, calculation which based on such commutator of H and A plus or minus. Uh, so it's quite common in the Lie algebras what we have commutators of this type when commutator of one <coughs> operator with another produce a multiple of the second operator. And that is very um, characteristic 
for ladder operators. When just based on wet commutator, forgetting uh, the particular uh, form of A plus and H, which we have so far, based on only on this commutator, we may deduce that action of the uh, A plus on eigenfunction produce an eigenfunction with higher value. So instead of being an eigenfunction with uh, value 2k plus 1, we obtain the next uh, eigenfunction with eigenvalue 2k plus 1, uh, plus, plus 3, sorry. Uh, furthermore, um, if we will ask about dynamics of a quantum system, which um, described by such Hamiltonian, when uh, it happened that um, particularly system became very simple in foxigal bargman space. Because in Schrodinger space, if you will try to describe what happened to uh, harmonic oscillator, so it will be certain uh, transformation based on Hermit function. It's not, uh, it's very, really will be integral operator which describes the uh, dynamic. But for the foxigal bargman space, uh, dynamics became very simple and really uh, in complete agreement which, uh, with the dynamic which we have in classical mechanics. In classical mechanics, in phase space, harmonic oscillator just make a uniform rotation uh, with constant uh, angular speed around the origin. And here we have the corresponding action, so the uh, <coughs> transformation in time for the arbitrary observable uh, or wave function for uh, arbitrary wave function f in fox eagle bargman space, the transformation is given by the rotation of its variable z. So that is complex rotation in plane produce the dynamic for harmonic oscillator. Now uh, we may consider what happened if we will um, further investigate properties of Fokker uh, Siegel Bargman space. As we already mentioned, uh, that space um, consists of L2 function on the complex plane with an additional property related to analyticity. Further property of uh, uh, images in Fox Siegel Bargman space or function in Fox Siegel Bargman space will be existence of reproducing property. <clears throat> in fact, any function in Fox Siegel Bargman space is an image under Wavelle transform of certain uh, function on the real line. So we may use the identity 68, which we had before for the twisted convolution of two. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, such function which are uh, fox eagle bargman transform and uh, uh, make a special case of this uh, transformation when three function in this identity phi 1, phi 2 and f2 are all Gaussians. When um, we uh, specialized identity 68 to a formula uh, 76 which tell us what the twisted convolution of any function in fox siegel bargman space with the uh, image of Gaussian will uh, return this function. So con twisted convolution with this function acts as reproducing formula. So we get integral which return our function f capital back. And that is a very um, important uh, situation where is a general theory of the uh, so-called reproducing kernel spaces, presence of such reproducing kernel simplify a lot of calculations. For example, if we have um, a reproducing kernel, then uh, we may um, investigate arbitrary uh, linear operators uh, just out of their action on the corresponding uh, reproducing kernel. So idea is as follow. So again, um, may I write it a bit more explicitly. So uh, reproducing formula essentially mean what my function fz can be obtained as integral over the complex plane of function f double u uh, that reproducing kernel kz double u over 
D double O. Now assume I have an operator, my operator, which act from Fox Siegel Bartman space, so L2 over C to uh, that uh, Fox Siegel Bartman space, which is denoted oftenly as F2. <coughs> when uh, applying T to F, I may use the reproducing formula and say what T is applied to such integral in reproducing formula. When uh, using linearity of our operator, I may say that as a result, I obtain action of T on that kernel with respect to variable Z integrated with uh, respect to measure double O. So when my operator T became integral operator, with the kernel TK Z double O. So that essentially highlighted formula on the screen is essentially uh, symbolically uh, tell the same uh, calculation. So in term of twisted convolution. So for any bounded linear operator T, uh, we may now represent it as just a twisted convolution with certain particular function, t, uh, action T on the uh, <coughs> Gaussian, image of the Gaussian. We uh, may um, note here the some additional properties of this uh, function, uh, which is integral kernel. Uh, if we will consider it as a function of just one variable, is a first one or second variable, then that both function shall be in fox siegel bartman space. And we also obtain the estimation for the norm of our operator uh, from below, or better you will say you can estimate the value of the kernel through the norm of the operator. So kernel satisfied uh, the condition that in second formula what it is bounded by the uh, is a bounded function with the uh, following estimation based on the norm <coughs> we uh, spoke on many occasions about integral transformation fox eagle bagman transformation which send the function from the uh, schrodinger model to fox eagle bagman model and of course, as we uh, speak, uh, spoke already for the general wavelet transform, uh, that transformation has the inverse. And inverse, again, uh, is known as the contravariant transform. We may just use the same Gaussian as reconstructing vector. And then apply the formula for the contravariant transform as 77, which explicitly tell us how to build a function on the real line out of the function on the complex plane from Fox Siegel Bartman space. That will be <coughs> the uh, integral 77. And else um, we may use here our uh, representation <coughs> uh, for this uh, integral transform in terms of um, eigen function for the harmonic oscillator, that uh, functions which was created by uh, annihilator, uh, annihilation and creation operators. So where images phi m uh, small and phi capital M, uh, so sum it up from zero to infinity with corresponding variables z and x, when that will be <coughs> given by the, uh, when uh, the sum, uh, it's convergent, uh, define a function which is uh, integral kernel in equation 77. Um, why this is a kernel? It's easy to verify uh, using orthonormality condition. So having that kernel, if I will uh, make an inner product with any function 
phi m double o when uh, by orthogonality condition uh, all terms except with sub index m from this sum disappear and uh, only the function with sub index m phi small m will be returned to me so clearly that sum represent integral transformation which send phi capitals m to phi small m's so and that is because it's an action which coincide with hoek siegel barman transform on orthonormal basis when it will be coinciding with this transformation on entire space well again probably it's worth to write it a bit explicitly so <coughs> if i have that infinite sum phi capital m and phi small m m from zero to infinity and i make the inner product with phi n <coughs> by the continuity of the inner product that can be represented as sum from m equal to zero to infinity of inner product phi m phi n phi small m but here is we have essentially delta function delta m n phi m so that is the exactly linear operator so this is the linear operator which sent phi capital m to the phi small m so that is exactly uh, defining relation for the uh, our fox siegel bargman transform and similarly we may uh, express uh, for the same reason uh, the formula for the uh, reproducing kernel for reproducing kernel of fox siegel bargman space uh, similarly can be represented through the uh, such infinite sum of eigenfunction phi m and phi m so quite convenient uh, expression which often used in the theory of reproducing kernel spaces now uh, we I turn out to the uh, next uh, big uh, section in our consideration uh, so far we mainly was concerned with the transformation of functions so we uh, make uh, use uh, Heisenberg group and its representation to map a function from the say uh, Schrodinger model to Fox Eagle Bergman model now we will <coughs> uh, expand <coughs> our integral transform to a larger more interesting sets uh, sets of uh, bounded operators acting on corresponding Hilbert spaces and here is the general uh, definition of our covariant transform uh, it will be still applicable so I recall what um, general covariant transform was defined by such a formula uh, where phi is certain uh, linear functional and we have a representation rho acting on the vector space V <clears throat> so assume our vector v, vector space V is a space of bounded linear operators from the space X to Y when we may uh, expand action of, op uh, of a group which act on vector to its action on operators so such an expansion on operators is given by identity 78 so we have here uh, <coughs> action on the vectors precede action uh, by operator a so and that transform operator a to something different to some another linear operator which will be called the image of operator a under the corresponding action of the group <clears throat> when uh, it's convenient to consider the uh, functional fiducial uh, functional f to be uh, just the uh, corresponding inner product or pairing if uh, situation really can be considered not only for the Gilbert spaces but for Banach spaces or even more generally for locally convex vector spaces 
probably we don't want that extreme generality here. Uh, so just uh, let's think in terms of Hilbert spaces. So assume we have a pairing here on the Hilbert space. So any vector uh, from Hilbert space <coughs> define a functional of that form. And then we may apply a covariant transform as a composition of action of the group and such a pairing. Uh, that definition, uh, maybe not in such generality, but essentially uh, for a particular case of the Heisenberg group, was used by Berezin to define his famous uh, calculus, very useful calculus, which apply applicable in both in quantum mechanics and in the uh, theory of operators. So Berezin calculus of operators. So uh, we may even define a little bit more general uh, case here when we have two groups, G1 and G2. <coughs> G1 act by representation on a space X and um, rho, uh, second representation of G2, act on the dual to the space Y. When corresponding transformation still uh, described by the initial general form for covariant transform can be given as such an expression based on two representation. Well, um, that extreme generality uh, may be useful in uh, many cases, but more often we meet the situation where our operator acts from a spec is X to itself, so Y is the same as X, and action of a group G and uh, group of symmetry on vectors is the same as the group of symmetry of functional, so G1 is equal to G2. When in this case, the above general formula uh, may be simplified, reduced, to a, a small expression, uh, so which include just the uh, such last in a product of a um, transformed operator acting on the uh, x query uh, to L. We will see a explicit, so again, that is a quite general definition which is um, uh, possible for many different groups, but in our particular case, we are interested in the group, Heisenberg group, and so we will work only with that situation. <coughs> now, uh, here there is a possibility to move in two uh, opposite directions. So, operators uh, are interesting, important objects, uh, but they are complicated, and it will be nice to reduce uh, study of operators to study a slightly easier um, objects. Uh, such easier object may be just functions. So um, here is an idea be behind so-called functional calculus. When we define a map from a set of functions to an operators, and which intertwine two representation of the same group on the respective space. So here is, we do not ask any um, algebraic homomorphism property, we do not uh, say what multiplication of functions shall represent multiplication of operators, because that condition is rather restrictive, its uh, multiplication of function is usually a commutative operation, so corresponding multiplication of operator will be commutative as well, if it's uh, uh, algebra homomorphism property applied. In our case, we ask um, for another algebraic condition, which is intertwining property between two uh, corresponding representation. So, uh, in this general terms, we have an explicit formula which provide a, a quite general setup for such a map. So if we have a representation rho acting on operators, then a map from function to operators can be built as integrated representation of rho. So we integrate that representation rho with function f, and that gives us a new operator. So that will be the formula 
for wet functional calculus. <coughs> and here we may apply that formula to uh, produce so-called pseudo-differential operators, or where oftenly abbreviated as PDO. This is quite important and wide class of the um, linear operators on the uh, Hilbert spaces defined on certain Euclidean spaces when using standard technique they may be expanded to operators over general manifolds and many uh, operators um, which related to problems of linear operators which are related to problems of mathematical physics may be expressed in this term. So, uh, <clears throat> essentially, the uh, formula which define to the differential operator is a composition of the uh, Fourier transform, uh, usual Fourier transform, and the Schrodinger representation. So, we take integrated representation for a function a hat, where a hat is the Fourier transform of function a. So we integrate it with the Schrodinger representation, which defined before. So from line 79, we move to the next line where Schrodinger representation is explicitly written. In the next line, we write down the uh, formula for the uh, Fourier transform. So uh, that function A hat now is expanded as a Fourier transform of function A P Q. Uh, and usual expression for the Fourier transform. Now, what uh, that formula tells us, now, uh, if we will uh, look carefully, we will see what we have uh, with respect to second variable P here. We have a double Fourier transform. One expression make a Fourier transform from P to Y. So this is in that term in exponent. We have a product PY. And then afterwards, we have a product of y to 2t to, uh, to minus x. So we have double Fourier transform, so it's return our function back a, but with substitution t minus half of x. So that double representation, uh, double Fourier transform, uh, because uh, Fourier transform it's, and its inverse are different only by the minus sign, so we obtain such a substitution into function A. And uh, here from the uh, west line, uh, moving to the last line, is just a change of variables where we denote T minus X as a new variable R. So that produces the last expression, uh, which is known as uh, the pseudo-differential operator with the symbol A in the while symmetrized uh, formula. So there are also kohn nirenberg uh, formula form of pseudo-differential operator. Uh, for some reason it's not so convenient. We will uh, not um, even explicitly write it down, probably here in this course. We will use only while symmetrized uh, symbol. And we uh, now describe good properties of uh, such explicit formula, what it does. <coughs> First of all, it's easy to verify if our symbol is a polynomial of degree n in first variable q. And uh, this case, uh, our uh, operator, which will be obtained in this way, will be exactly the differential operator of order n where you formally replace variable q by operator d of derivation. So just, uh, again, property of uh, Fourier transform can be explicitly uh, used uh, uh, to verify that expression. And uh, that gives the name of our operator, why it's called a pseudo-differential operator, because for polynomials it is a representation of usual differential operators, but if we take more general function A, more general symbols, not uh, polynomials, then we obtain pseudo-differential operators, more general formula. Then from this formula, we can may verify what uh, the adjoint operator uh, to such operator which we defined will be operator 
uh, with a symbol which is just complex conjugation of the symbol A. So calculation of a joint became extremely easy in the while symmetrized formula. And in particular, uh, we may see also that uh, we, uh, if our symbol is a real valued function, when corresponding operator will be self-adjoint. So if we have uh, real valued function as a symbol, when operator is self-adjoint. This is again, applic uh, besides being mathematically useful property, is also uh, very good in term of quantum mechanics, because in classical mechanics we have observables to be real valued function on the phase space, and in quantum mechanics we shall correspond uh, certain self-adjoint operators on the Hilbert space. And here we have exactly such a map which send a real valued function to self-adjoint on certain Hilbert space, self-adjoint operator on certain Hilbert space. So that is a particular uh, expression which is known as while quantization. So a function uh, map which send function to operators, to observables. Then <coughs> another formula uh, if we will uh, consider what happened uh, with uh, matrix coefficient of such operator, really matrix coefficient are given, uh, as that uh, two lines calculation shows, to the inner product of symbol A with the fox siegel barkman transform of a function F. So we may do fox siegel barkman transform of function F and calculate the uh, corresponding value of the inner product. In particular, trace of operator is easy to verify using that formula. Then uh, we may use certain uh, invariance properties uh, for our uh, operator. First of all, we may see what a shift of uh, arguments in our symbol by A and B uh, can be achieved through the uh, Schrodinger representation just because that operator U which is the uh, shift in the phase space, corresponding shift in the phase space, intertwine uh, our pseudo differential operator with symbol A to operator with symbol A prime. So that is covariance property which also uh, useful to verify. And finally, the formula for composition of uh, two such operators is easy to obtain from uh, its definition, because essentially uh, how we define our pseudo-differential operator, this is integrated representation of the Fourier transform of symbol A. So that is our definition. So uh, when, because we have here a representation row, when by the property of representation, uh, product of two such operator correspond to integrated representation of the twisted convolution. So composition of uh, two pseudo differential operators are essentially calculated through the formula uh, which obtained by the twisted convolution for Fourier transform of the symbols. Um, we already seen here what we almost get the complete description of pseudo differential operators in terms of the Heisenberg group. So row integrated representation for functions here act on the symbols uh, which are Fourier transform but only Fourier transform slightly apart, slightly away uh, from our language of Heisenberg group. <clears throat> and here came in the last uh, bit, which link together the, uh, our construction with the Heisenberg group. So recall what the twisted convolution of two kernels is defined by the formula 43, which is rep uh, uh, represented again here on that screen. And it's easy to see if we have a constant function k2 here, if k2 is a constant function, that essentially twisted convolution 
is reduced to a kind of Fourier transform. Here we have so-called symplectic Fourier transform where a coefficient in the exponent is slightly different from usual Fourier transform just by certain signs, pluses change with minuses in certain places. And that uh, say to us what uh, we may uh, really replace the Fourier transform by twisted convolution with the constant function, 2 to the power minus n. And that will be symplectic transform with simple, uh, easily to verify properties which tell us that integrated representation of such transformation will be just minus of integrated representation from initial function and uh, that uh, operation is involution. So unlike the Fourier transform where we need to say in, uh, change sign in the um, symplectic Fourier transform we may apply a second power of that operator to get the identity. When, uh, because that <coughs> operation is essentially uh, the twisted convolution with constant function, when associativity of twisted convolution provides the following formula, the uh, highlighted formula on the screen, easily provided here, which all together give us the explicit uh, expression for uh, calculus of symbols. So if I have an operator, a pseudo differential operator uh, defined by function d and function e, then a composition will be calculated by expression 82. So expression will be uh, calculated by the formula 82. Here uh, where the first term in that uh, expansion uh, over the uh, powers of derivative will be uh, zero derivative, so it's simply the product of function. The first term uh, is the first order derivative expansion in D and E, which essentially coincide with the Poisson brackets. So that expression is because uh, anti-symmetric form uh, related to symplectic form which produce Poisson brackets. So in particular, if we will look on the <coughs> commutator based on that composition role, then all e uh, uh, terms, uh, commutative terms will disappear and we will have just anti-symmetric terms in commutators. So product of D and E uh, from uh, that twisting convolution disappear. So the first term in the expansion of composition of operator will be uh, simply the Poisson bracket. So uh, that calculus of pseudo differential operators uh, while calculus essentially provide the uh, certain technique of quantization starting from functions on the phase space function of two variables, coordinates and momentum. We build certain operators, which may be considered as either operators in the Schrodinger model or fox siegel barman model. Uh, again, uh, real valued function correspond to self-adjoint operators and commutator, the quantum operation uh, on observables, uh, in the, its expansion over the uh, powers of Planck constant in the first term coincide uh, with the Poisson bracket. So its Poisson bracket is first term approximation to quantum commutator. So that is really uh, often viewed as very good explanation why calculus of pseudo, pseudo differential operators represent a model for a quantum mechanical system. Well, uh, we advanced well during today's lecture. Uh, I hope it's probably the good place to stop. Do you have any questions? All right, then I hope to see you next week. <laughs>